and people are smelling. If they get to smelling too much, the nose opens up and the ears stop up. Amen. And it said, out of your belly shall be what? Nothing. Amen. It's what's going into my belly I'm worried about, Brother D. Amen. Not what's coming out of my belly. Amen. Thank you, Brother Charlie. I don't need one, but that, that's good. Amen. If I go to, we'll see. Hopefully, we won't need them. Amen. Let's give directly into the word of the Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the book of Zechariah, chapter 14. Try this at Zechariah. We're preaching out of another book besides the book of... Amen. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 20 and 21. Everyone fella said, the problem with you apostolic folks is you all can't get out of the book of Acts. I said, the problem with you folks, you never get in the book of Acts. <laughs> Mess with me, I'll tell you where to go. To heaven. Amen. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. All caps. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and Judea shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see there then. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Now I know, I, I always, there's a mindset that comes when that word holiness is used. All of a sudden people shut down. Uh-oh, I'm going to get it now. Amen. I want you to get out of that mindset today, would you please? You see that word holiness, is oh, it's going to be one of them holiness teaching things. Amen. No, I'm, I'm going to try to reveal something to you here today. Amen. And I want you to see this today. Amen. That there's going to be, amen, the Zechariah saw something with, in a bit of its mouth. It said, holiness unto the Lord was on this thing. Amen. In Exodus chapter 28, verse 31 through 36, we'll get into some of that in a minute. He's there already, isn't he? Wow. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephah of all blue, and there shall be a hole in the top of it. In the midst thereof it shall have a binding of woven work round about the hole of it as if it were the hole of habergen, and it be not rent. Amen. What does that mean? That means something that's kind of double or triple stitched all the way around. Amen. It's you ain't going to just, you know what I mean? It's one thing to rip a T-shirt. You ever try to rip it at the seam crossways? Amen. That's how that neck was designed. They've been like a giant seam all the way around that neck. Maybe Sister Vivian or Sister Tiffany could give us a class someday. Amen. On how you can do it, I don't know. Amen. But I know you just can't rip it. And beneath upon the hem of, the, of, of it thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem and bells of gold between them round about. Verse 34, a golden bell and a pomegranate. Let me say it with me. A golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe. Round about. So what was that robe? All around it was what? A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell. And you get the point. Amen. Shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place. Now what that says, it says the holy place. Not the holiest of holies. But it shall be heard when he's in the holy place. Before the Lord. And when he cometh out, that he die not. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like the engravings of a signet that says what? Sound familiar to anybody? Amen. It sounds holy, holiness unto the Lord. Amen. Let's all bow our heads in a word of prayer right now. I am going to ask Brother Lloyd, would you please pray over this today? Amen. When I was a little fella, I lived very near a church called St. Bernard, you can be seated, St. Bernard Catholic Church in Dayton, Kentucky. From the outside to the inside, it was an impressive edifice that took up roughly a whole city block with all the adjacent properties, at least, that it had. <clears throat> And every Sunday morning, you'd hear the sound of your church bell that would resonate from the tower of that church. A loud clanging of the bells that signaled to the whole city, amen, that you better wake up because church is in session. They would, that sound of the bells, they would make 
probably on usually three occasions that I knew of. If there was more, I just did not know what they were because I was not familiar with what they did there. But I could always tell that church, amen, number one, was in session when the bells were going, or that a wedding was taking place if the bells were going, or if a death had occurred, amen, when the bells were going, amen. Can I stop just for a moment before I get started on this today? Because I kind of feel like the Holy Ghost is leading me here today. I want to just take an exhortation to praise God because he woke me up this morning. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Can I just introduce Jesus to you all again here today? And him crucify the power of God unto salvation. For the book says of him that he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. That he is the lily of the valley and the bright and the morning star. That he is alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. That he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our day star. He's the fairest of 10,000. Let me go on. He's the captain of my salvation. He's the great physician. He's the almighty God. Does anybody need some of this stuff in here? Amen. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's the true vine. He's the root, and he's the offspring of David. He's the answer to every question, and he changes adjectives to describe him. He heals the sick. And he raises the dead. He read, he's the head of the oppressed. Amen. He raises the head of the oppressed. And he saves the laws. He resurrects the just. His name is what? Amen. His name is Jesus. Us. Amen. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, I don't care what you're doing in this house today. And you can be standing and say it. Uh, amen. He's powerful if you're standing. Or if you're too tired to stand and all you can do is sit. Uh, his name uh, is still powerful. If you're too tired to sit uh, and all you can do uh, is lay upon your bed at night uh, because you're weak uh, from a week's worth of work uh, and aggravation and stress uh, has kept you down. Uh, his name uh, is still Jesus. Amen. And you can call upon him whether you're standing. Uh, you you can call upon him whether you're sitting. You can call upon him when you are laying down. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you call upon his name because at the mere utterance of his name, power comes straight from the throne of God and from the Lamb here today. Mountains will shake at his presence. People bow in obeisance to his holiness. Amen. The mere mention of his essence of being one makes devils tremble and grovel in terror. With a word, he'll dispatch an angel just for you amen with a word he can form a world is what he can do amen with a word he makes devils run but with a shout someday he's going to take a bride home with him let me tell you who his name is you better get it on your lips again his name is Jesus I just feel like sometimes I need to reintroduce you to him again Amen. You see, that bell had an important place in Scripture. Although it's referred to a couple of times, the bell is a simple hollow shell that was what was called a clapper that strikes the shell and forms a sound that resonates out from the hollow metal shell. It was the bell that was attached to the bottom of the high priest robe. It was changed around the robe with pomegranates. Each alternated as a bell and a pomegranate. A bell and a pomegranate all around the robe. This robe was blue and it was worn underneath the ephod and over top the, comb, the coat of pure white linen. It was the middle of the three garments. If you've ever seen this high priest robe, I wish I had a picture of it here. I wish I thought they'd get an illustration up here. You would have found the one robe, the white robe, was worn next to the skin. It's made of pure linen that went all the way down. He'd been to the ankle, to the foot. And, of course, the robe I'm talking about was the blue robe of the ephod. Amen. The priestly robe. And it would come all the way down about midway to the knee, maybe a little bit lower than the knee. Amen. Uh, maybe a little bit longer than it actually. Amen. But not as long as the white robe would. So you could see the blue of the other robe. And, of course, there was, amen, amen. the garment that was worn around the coat here. Amen. Upon it would be the... Excuse me. Upon it would be the 12 stones. Amen. Upon it. Amen. And of course, there would be a mitre upon his head that said, Holiness unto the Lord. Amen. 
Those 12 precious stones in this ephod was encased in gold, which represented the 12 tribes of Israel that were framed in the precious golden word of God. The Urim and the and two onyx stones on the shoulders, which had six tribes inscribed on each stone. Amen. When I talk to you about this ephod, it's important for us to understand why we need to know about it. The robe of the ephod, underneath of the ephod, it was made of blue, denoting the heavenly nature of Christ, or the realm of the spirit. Because blue denoted that which is above. As the sky is blue, it represented the spirit of God. And at the bottom of this garment was golden bells that alternated with pomegranates. The coat was underneath the robe. It was worn next to the skin. It was made of pure white linen. And it represented the purity and undefiled sinless life of Jesus Christ as he was the lamb without spot and without blemish. The high priest also had a miter, or what we might call a turban, on his head that was made of pure gold that was engraved with these words, holiness unto the Lord. It represented the very essence of God, that he was a very holy God. Amen. It was made of gold, and gold represents, of course, the word of God, the Bible tells us. Amen. It was also at the head, the beginning of the body. No wonder the Bible says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And please note, there was only one head, amen, that came out of that garment. Not three. Amen. Only one head. It's the robe of the effort which had the golden bells that I want to talk to you about here today. These golden bells were thought to be on the bottom of the garment because on the day of atonement, when the high priest would go into the holiest of holies and sprinkle blood on the mercy seat to atone for the sins of the nation, these bells would ring. It would be a sign to the nation that the high priest was alive. It said that they would tie a rope to his leg so that if he died that they could pull him back. I do not know if that is true or not. Amen. That's simply what some people say. My Bible does say that, amen, that he was to go in there, that he really was not supposed to wear anything, amen, that he die not, amen. Praise God, amen. However, on the day of atonement, that one day of atonement, the high priest could, according to the commandment of God, amen, could not enter the holiest of holies with all of his garments on. He could only enter with a coat of white linen. That was all he was allowed to go into with. That was it. The rest of the garments would have to be taken off in the holy place. God wanted to make sure that when the sacrifice is given, it was done fully as a man. Amen. No part of his divinity could help him. No one part of it could help him. Jesus, who represented both the high priest and the sacrifice, had to be fully submitted as a man, being fully human, that fully human will that would go to the cross. Jesus had to be like us. When Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, he went like us. You have to understand something here today. If we're ever going to stand before God, then give an account to him. We can't pull the old, well, you don't know what it's like being us. He does know what it's like to be us. He was tempted at all points that we are tempted, yet did not sin. We talked about it earlier. He could keep a covenant. We couldn't. Amen. He could do this without sinning. We can't. We have shown that we can't. Amen. That's why he gave us a new covenant, a better covenant, a greater covenant. Amen. It was for our understanding that the high priest had the bells on the robe, for it represented Pentecost. Amen. A lot of folks say, well, I don't see where Pentecost is ever put into that tabernacle. It's in there. You just got to know where to look. Amen. It represented Pentecost. Because when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one mind and one accord and one place. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each and every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Something took place, amen, the sound of ministry of God was taking place in those priests. They were now becoming a priesthood before God, just like the priests of Aaron before, except 
going to be a greater priesthood under the priesthood of Melchizedek. Amen. Uh, under a priesthood that will be greater. Amen. Because the priesthood of Aaron was only to the nation of Israel. There must be a priesthood that would be to the entire world. Amen. And that entire worldly priesthood, amen, would have the same way. Amen. When they ministered in the holy place, it would come from the same direction. Amen. You'd hear the sound of the bells. Amen. And you'd hear the pomegranate. You'd see the clapper of the tongue. Amen. Slammering against the sound of the bell of the mouth. Amen. Making a noise. Amen. Making a sound. Amen. That's never been uttered before in a language you could not understand. Amen. A language, amen, praise God, that could be understood, amen, only as the Spirit of the Lord gave the utterance, amen. In other words, here today, so those pomegranates that were also placed upon that same robe that went around, amen, it was pomegranates were said to have 613 seeds in them, amen. That's what the Jews say. The pomegranates have 613. If you crack one open, you should be able to count 613 seeds. Now, I've never tried to do it, have some said, yeah, there's really 613. Some will say there's 615. And I've heard others say, well, there's only 580 in there. Amen. I don't really know. The reality of the is, amen. It said, though, that uh, it was like, amen, they used that, amen, because of the type of the law of Moses, amen. Moses had 613 commandments in his law, amen. And what God was trying to show them on, on that day of Pentecost is that ministry was still going to go forward that day. Ministry was still going to go onward, amen, because there's going to come the sound of God putting something upon your inward heart, amen. It's going to be the sound of a bell and a pomegranate being placed together. A bell and a pomegranate. In other words, when God was going to put something on the inside, heart, amen, you're going to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God giveth the utterance because that clapper is going to go against the sound of the walls of that jaw, amen, the sound of the walls of the mouth, and there's going to be a golden bell that's going to come forth, because why? Because it's straight from the Word of God. We read about it in Isaiah. We read about it in Jeremiah this morning. We read about it in the book of Joel, that God had something greater for us, amen. That's why it's so important that we stay chock full of the Holy Ghost and with fire. You're not truly ministering if you're not full of the Holy Ghost and with fire. You're not truly ministering, amen, in any place if you're not full of the Holy Ghost. You're just going through the motions. If you're going through the rituals, if you're going through the routine, you're not truly ministering in the house of God. Amen. I worry of folks that stare now and don't know how to clap their hands in church anymore. I worry about folks that just sit there, amen, and receive the word and never respond to it anymore. Amen. I don't know what you got, but you ain't got what I got. Amen. Because what I got makes me happy. What I got makes me joyful. What I got makes me, puts a little spring in my step. Uh, no matter how old and how fat I am, amen, uh, it puts a little something in me, amen. No matter what, I, I'm telling you, I got something on the inside of me, amen, that just stirs me uh, and it moves me uh, and it causes me, uh, amen, to feel some things. Uh, it causes me to, to want to do some things. Uh, it causes me and it stirs me. See, I... You see, the large churches of this world have got bells on the outside that ring and say church is in session. But, honey, I got a bell on the inside of me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It says church is in session. God never planned it that way. He said, the way you tell church is in session around here is when you hear the sound of the bells. That's when church is really in session around here. Amen. When you hear the sound of the bells, if you're listening for some bells in here, that's how you know church is in session. Amen. Church is not in session where we just sit there and receive and receive and receive. Amen. But never respond, respond, respond. Amen. Praise God. I'm so sick of heads nodding at me. Amen. I'd rather see you shouting at me. Amen. I'd rather see you worshiping. Amen. I'd rather see you jumping up. Amen. Because you can't contain yourself. Amen. At the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is just moving. Amen. My God. Some of you have got that Baptist nod down so well. Amen. You can't do anything else. Amen. I'm not joking here, folks. Amen. you got to have the Holy Ghost stirring you. Stirring you. Amen. The worldly chose supposed splendor from the outside, but God wants his true church to have splendor on the inside. Amen. Praise God. No wonder God said he will write the law not on tables of stone, but in our hearts. God gave us a tabernacle plan of salvation. He surely did. But God also gave us a tabernacle plan of sanctification. Amen. We like talking about 
saved. Amen. Talking about being sanctified. Amen. So I know I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. The blue robe of the ephah began at the head and it flowed downward. In the book of Acts chapter 2, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. I'm not governed by the laws on the outside written on tables of stone, but I am governed on the inside by laws written on the table of my heart. I acknowledge the reception of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you will hear the sound coming out of me. It's called what? Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God giveth the utterance. Amen. That's how you no true ministry is working on the inside of your life. It's not because you grew up in mom or dad's church. It's not because, amen, you grew up in mom and dad's tutelage. It's not because, amen, you grew up in some storefront somewhere or because you, amen, we've been around this your whole life, amen, because you're five generations in or seven generations in or 25. I don't know how many generations you've got, but I know this much, amen. You better be speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance or you're not ministering. These bells were golden bells. There are a lot of folks professing to receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They say they have the Holy Ghost, but they don't have a sound. Come on. How do you get into this wedding? How do you hear with a wedding garment on you? The Bible said he was, he was what? Couldn't make a sound. Couldn't say a word. Bind him hand and foot. Man, you see, I, I don't want to have someone tell me, hey, uh, all you got to do is say, see my bow tie, amen, 10 times real fast, and you've got the Holy Ghost, amen. Amen, or, or hand you a slip of paper with these words on and say, uh, this is your tongue talking words. What kind of nonsense is that, amen? This thing came from heaven above, amen? This thing come from some man's hand somewhere, amen, or some kind of instruction booklet. Uh, this came from heaven above. This came from a sound from heaven uh, as of a rushing mighty wind uh, and it filled all the house uh, where they were sitting. Amen. The Bible says uh, there's nothing more than a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. There's nothing more, nothing gold about them. There's nothing but brass. You see, Goliath's armor was full of brass. Amen. Amen. You need to run away from these folks as fast as you can. Amen. Amen. If you get your church, amen, from TBN or one of them television networks, shame on you. Amen. It's not where you need to get your church from. You hear me? Because they're going to get you so mixed up, you don't know whether you're coming or going. You'll question everything your pastor says. Amen. Why? Because that's not what he said. That's not what she said. Come on. Well, come on. Praise God, because when you're sick and you're in the hospital, I see them show up for you. Hello. Just send it in. (laughs) Well, I'm in trouble. Shut up, Brother D. (laughs) I thank God I speak in tongues. And I'm going to continue to speak in tongues. Because I got a sound from heaven. Amen. Amen. There's a fellow by the name of John Dunn. Amen. Said it had death bells that would they ring at the church. I remember uh, when folks would die, and they would. It wasn't very often you'd see it happen, but they would have some. I don't know what kind of service they would have for them if they would even the body was even there. I really don't know, but I know when they would have some kind of service, a memorial service, or whatever it would be. Amen. The poet John Dunn once said, "Don't ask for whom the bell tolls for; it tolls for thee." We need to die out to ourselves. Pray for someone else. Amen. To die out to self. When you start praying in tongues, it sounds a toll to the loss of the spirit, and it goes straight to the throne of God. It screams, God, you must help. There are souls that are dying. There are souls that are lost. When's the last time you had a prayer session that led to groaning in the Holy Ghost? When's the last time you had a prayer session? Oh, come on. Come on, we got it down. If I can just get the church doors by 1028.
Brother Bill and Brother Chris worked hard on that prayer room. You ought to be burning it up. Amen. It's got music all in it, painted all nice. Everything all set aside. But we still want to get here at 1029. I prayed this morning, big liar. No, you didn't. You barely got here in time. I prayed on the way in. It wasn't a very good prayer, I guarantee you. I've tried to pray while I'm driving. It's not easy. Lord, help me as I go today. Hey. Well, y'all got speechless. There's some wedding bells. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. There's going to be a sound, folks. There's going to be a sound that comes on that wedding day. Amen. Because that's where real ministry is taking place. It always comes with a sound. Jesus said in his parable, the uninvited guest, that there was someone there without a wedding garment on. Amen. But the Bible said he was speechless. I know I've talked about that already. But he said, but, amen. If you've got a wedding garment on you, you won't, <laughs> amen, you won't be without a sound. You won't be speechless. Amen. amen. There's going to be a clanging coming through your mouth. As the, amen. As the tongue begins to clap against the inside of your cheeks and the roof of your mouth, it resonates a heavenly language. Amen. Zechariah 14 talks about the day of the Lord, he said. I read that earlier. How the horses will have around their necks, amen, bells around their necks. And this translation says it's going to be like a bit or a bridle with the inscription, holiness unto the Lord. I want you to hear what he just said. That holiness unto the Lord that we read about, amen. We read about it in Exodus. When Zechariah was prophesying a time beyond Exodus. You see, in the time of the Aaronic priesthood, this thing was stuck on a chair. Holiness unto the Lord. But Zechariah said this thing is going to be like a bit in the breath of a horse. It's going to be right here. You see, that's the same inscription that was on the high priest's mitre. No longer will the bell be on the top of the robe. Now it's going to be at its head. You see, horses in Scripture always represent the Spirit. Amen. You'll see the four horsemen in the book of Revelation talking about the Spirit of God. It always represents the Spirit in the kingdom of God. Someday the tongue talkers, the bells that control the horse, amen, that's in the, its mouth will be controlled completely by the Spirit. No more flesh to battle with it. Amen. No. No, the bells are going from downtown on the robe to uptown on the robe where they belong. Amen. We shall be with him someday and so shall we be forever with the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. You can't be holy without the. Somebody say it again. You can't be holy without the. You can't be holy without the. Oh, amen. Some people profess it. Amen. Some people have it. Amen. Some people wear the holiness as a crown. Be careful. That's what the ironic priesthood did. I'm more holy than you are. See my mitre? It says, I'm holy. Be careful. It needs to be here, not here. Amen. The pots of the Lord's house should be like the bowls before the altar. These pots were full of fire and incense that went up as a sweet smelling smoke before the Lord. One day, a pure praise. For we'll be around the throne crying this. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You see, when you heard the bells of the high priest, he was ministering in the tabernacle. You know, I'd love for the Lord to minister here today. Amen. But when he's ministering, we'll hear the sound of the bell. You see, the Bible says that my spirit will bear witness with his spirit. And we are one of his. Folks, amen. 
Some of you are so intensely listening here today because I know I'm striking home with some of you. Amen. But witness with me here. Some of you should be standing to your feet going, oh, God. I need him to touch me. I need you to move in a mighty way. My God, I need you to just begin to bless and touch me in a way I haven't been touched in a while. I need you, God, to fill me again like you filled me before. Lord, I need a refreshing and a renewing from you. I need the chock full of the Holy Ghost. My God, how can I minister, Lord? Amen. How can I minister to anybody if I'm not full of the Holy Ghost? My God. The problem is we'll constantly have to be ministered to and never doing any ministry in ourselves. And so the church does nothing but minister to needs all day long. Amen. So we're useless to others. We can't get ourselves right. Man. My God. I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost moving. I want the power of his divine. I want you to stand to your feet with me right now. I don't want any music to come. I don't want any of that stuff right now. I just want you to stand to your feet. I want you to lift your hands to heaven. I want you to start calling upon the name of the Lord here today. Come on. I want you to start calling on his name here today. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for bailout plans from anybody here. Don't go grabbing the kids and trying to run off quickly. Amen. I'm, you need to get a hold of God right now. You need to put those hands in the air. Come on, I know there's food downstairs. Amen. Uh, come on, I, uh, but I need you to call upon the name of the Lord right now. Come on, uh, there's power in praise. Uh, there's power in calling to him right now. Lord, I need you to come in power and demonstration uh, of your spirit. Uh, come and anoint with fresh oil here today. God, begin to fill up vessels, oh God. Begin to fill up vessels here today. Look at the no 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 boko shamana na bakata ha. Rosando no 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 boho shala la baki ando no 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 boho. Rikando no 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 boho shando no 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 boho. Riando no no. I want I want y'all to do me a favor right now. I want you to move from your seats. I want you to all come down here in the front. Amen. I want you to make a couple lines down here, would you? Come on. Bring the kids with you. Amen. It's okay. We'll watch them. Amen. I want you to come on down here. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. I'm not going to let you off the hook today. I'm not going to run out the door on me today. Amen. It's too important. Amen. That God fills you with something here today. It's too important that God touches you here today. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can't do it from that chair right now. I say bring it down to the front. Listen to your pastor here today. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise it. Now you can see it. You got a bum leg, brother. It's, it's fine. I'm not going to make you stand. I know where you're at. Amen. I'm talking about able-bodied folks Amen. I'm talking about folks that need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe God wants to pour out his spirit right now. Oh, folks that desire him. Huh? The folks that want to know him here today. Oh, I want to put some hands to heaven right now. We're just going to call on him for a while. Is that all right with you? Uh, amen. Even today, that's okay with me. I need somebody to lift your hands to heaven. I want to begin to call upon the name of the Lord right now. Come on. Come on. Come on, I want you to lift them up. I want them voices raised right now. Come on, I want you to raise your voice to heaven right now. I want you to raise your voice to heaven right now. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on. Some of you have come in here. My God, your spirits are dragging in with you. It's time. Amen. Come on. Come on. There are folks here that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And some of you Holy Ghost feel. Christians don't even come with the Holy Ghost yourself. Amen. I want you to know something right now. How they ever going to get ministered to? Uh, amen. Uh, God can't speak to your heart uh, because you're sitting on empty all the time. Amen. Come on, somebody. I want you to be filled uh, with his divine presence in this house right now. Come on. Somebody. I want you to call on him yourself. Uh, if you don't know what to do, let me tell you how to start. You need to start by repenting before God. Come on, let's just start by repenting right now. Lord, forgive me of my sins uh, and forgive those that would sin against me. Lord, wash me clean uh, in the shed blood of Jesus Christ right now. Remove iniquity from me uh, and cleanse me of all unrighteousness, Lord. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry for things I have spoken to people this week. Uh, Lord, forgive me for the things that I have done that I've hurt people with, oh God. Uh, Lord, forgive me, Lord God, for every idle word, oh God, for every foolish thing I have said. For every word that I've let slip, for anything that I've done this week, God, Lord, I pray right now for your divine anointing, your divine power. And the Lord, let there come forth ministry in the house of God 
today. Let it begin to minister to the hearts here today. Lord God, to the Lord God, to the Lord God, pour out that divine power. What a conda. Holy Ghost filled men. Amen. I want you to begin to lay hands on folks right now. Come on, ministry. Help me out here right now. Amen. Uh, praise God wherever you're able here today. Amen. I need some of you to lay hands on some people here today. Amen. Come on, some folks uh, need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to start laying hands on folks. Amen. Uh, pray. Come on. Uh, let's start praying for one another right now. Amen. Let's start praying for one another right now. Come on, some of you need a breakthrough in a mighty way. Some of you need a breakthrough in a way here today that you haven't had in a long time. Oh, come on, God's desiring to pour it out here today. He's desiring of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You need to pray right now. Come on, this Holy Ghost is promised to you. But it's promised unto you and to your children, to those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God should call. With other words, and he testify and exhort, say and save yourself from this untoward generation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, begin to pray for your brother. Begin to pray for your sister. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Come on, you can't get the Holy Ghost with your mouth shut. Amen. You got to open your mouth. Amen. You got to repent before God. Hey, it's already been promised to you. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name, all you got to do is repent before God and yield yourself to his presence. Amen. Yield to his presence right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Lord, let it avail even now, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 My God, my God, my God. My Lord, my Lord. <clears throat> Come on, I'm not going to transgress your will. Amen. I can't do that. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, amen, you better be desiring this thing. Lord, you need to refill me. You need to touch me again. I need a renewal, God. I need a refreshing. Man, trust me, I'm not trying to charge any man here today. 
I'm not trying to charge any woman here today, nor am I trying to charge any child. But I will say this, amen. My God, it's got to get into us. Amen. We, my Lord, my Lord, just, listen, we, for years Pentecost got by with God just pouring out his presence on us. Amen. And we're, when you stop becoming hungry, come on, mom and dad can't make you eat. You've got to be hungry for this. Come on. God allowed David, of all people, he allowed David, who was not even a priest at the time, to step into the holy place and eat of the bread, of the table of bread, which was not lawful for him to do. But the law of the hungry overtook, amen, the law of the tabernacle. Do you understand what that means? That means whosoever hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. I pray a spiritual hunger overtakes you. I pray a spiritual hunger today overtakes you. When you wake up this morning, if God gives us another day, my goodness, you better hope God gives you another day. Amen. Ah, my God. I'm feeling something in the Holy Ghost stirring. I want you to know that. It used to be one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Then we got down to a sweet hour of prayer. Well, they say finally, it's just a little talk with Jesus is where we're at now. Come on. Praise God. Come on, like I said, I'm not trying to admonish, but I'm trying to push you to good works here today. I'm trying to provoke you to good works. Because you're going to be better off for it. You hear me? You're going to be better off for it. Come on, I'm not out here trying to hit you with some kind of spiritual hammer. Amen. Just the opposite's true. I'm trying to bring you to a place, amen, where God can help you. My God, where he can help you. Amen. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. I guess we better eat something. Amen. Amen. I just feel like today, if, I, just, I don't feel like I can release you just yet. Y'all bear with me for a minute. Hmm. My God. Y'all need to pray right now. Help me. God's trying to direct me here, and I'm trying to figure out what he wants. Come on, I've learned not to just be in a big old hurry and just go into something else. God's trying to direct me here. Lord, I need your help here today. Hmm. My God. I'm going to have you do one more thing for me today. I want you to find the person next to you right now, wherever they are. Come on. And I want you to pray for that individual. And I want you to ask that individual right now. Look at them. And ask them what their need is. Amen. And if they're willing to tell you what their need is, I want you to pray for them. If they're not willing to tell you what their need is, then you pray, God, your will be done. Did you hear me? Amen. Come on. Some things I know they don't want everybody knowing about. Amen. We're going to pray the Lord's will be done. Come on, I, I want you to find it. Get, get, grab somebody and pray for them. Reach out to them. Put your hands. Just, Lord, I'm going to come down and pray with you for a minute. Is anybody linked up with everybody here? Is there anybody not praying with somebody? Is there anybody not praying with somebody? Is there anybody not praying with somebody? All right, let's begin to pray together right now. Heavenly Father, I pray for my brother and my sister here today. Lord, for the needs right now, Lord God, that may be in their life today. Lord, I'm praying that you touch right now Sister Lloyd's back, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you touch her body, Lord God. Lord, but I'm asking more for just a healing for her, Lord God. Lord, I'm asking you to bring joy, Lord God. Abundance of joy, Lord God. Let it flow from the throne of God and from the Lamb to her right now. Lord, I pray for your anointing, O God, to rest upon her, Lord God, that your will will be accomplished in her life here today, Lord God. Touch her right now, Lord God, according to to your word today, Lord God. Let blessing and glory and honor, Lord God, come now from the throne of God and from the Lamb, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask you right now, Lord God. Bless right now, Lord God. Bless right now, Lord God. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Oh, let's praise him right now. Come on. I want you to lift your voice to him. Say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. As we're dismissed to go downstairs, why don't we have Brother Brother Chris Dan? I want you to pray, amen, to close us out here. Pray over the food also for us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Rub a dub dub. Bring on the grub. Amen. Go eat. It's hot here, man. Turn that thing down. It's 50. It's 50.